Hello, hello, hello. Great. Hello from Boston. Fantastic. Hello, Michelle. How are you doing? Hello, Viviana. Hello, everybody. Norma, Vanessa, Mendoza. Good. Great. Good, good. I'm delighted. Hello from Peru, from Lima. Fantastic. Good. Well, I'm glad you can all hear me and see me fine. That is just great. So, uh, welcome to the next of our Macmillan webinars. This one, well, as you know already, is uh, developing interactive speaking skills for student for students. I called it Only Connect, and you'll see why very soon. Just to tell you something before we start, that um, you're all going to get a certificate of attendance. Um, you don't need to do anything at all um, because we've got your emails, as you know. So everyone's going to get a certificate that will be sent off to you um, after the end of the webinar. Okay. It's just to remind you about that. Okay, so just to quickly ask, where where is where is everybody from? I see we've got some people from from all over the place. Actually, we've got um, Peru. We've got plenty from Argentina, Uruguay, etc. Paraguay as well. Ciudad del Este, Rio Gallegos, great, all over the place. Brilliant. Very, very good. Okay. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad to see so many people here. That's absolutely fantastic. And I'm also glad that all the, the sound is working everything and you can hear and see me okay. That is that is great. Okay. So let's let's begin. Let's begin, guys, shall we? So let's see. Interactive speaking skills for skills for students. Now, I've got a story to tell you at the beginning of this. Okay, um, this story is about my first conversation class, the first one I had many years ago in Argentina. Um, by the way, I am changing the slides, so if you can't see the slides changing, please let me know. And I was given a group of uh, adolescent students. They were all like 15, 16 years old. And I was very happy about this. I thought, this is this is great. And I had this, this fantasy that um, this is how things would be in my conversation class. And I thought that everyone was going to, to love me and everyone was going to have a great time in the conversation class. And unfortunately, the reality was a little bit different. Um, it was very difficult to get everybody to uh, talk, unfortunately in this conversation class. And I, I don't know whether any of you can relate to the picture that you can see on the bottom right hand of your screen, but uh, I definitely felt like this isn't exactly how I wanted things to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hi from Morocco. It's so good to have everyone, all these people from all over the world. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it does happen. Exactly, Martin, it does happen. So I thought, okay, first of all, why is this happening? And secondly, what, what can I do about it? Um, so first of all, to uh, I'm going to ask you a question, because I think, I think it has something to do with this, especially for, um, for adolescent students, I would say. I'm going to give you three words in a second, uh, one of which means fear of speaking. OK, and I want you to decide which one you think it is. I give you three options. OK, so here we go. A, B or C, which one means fear of speaking? So the first one is A, ethobiphobia. B is glossophobia and C is verbophobia. So let's let's have some votes in the, the chat box, please. By the way, um, while while everyone's thinking about that for a second, just to say that You'll probably see if you've not been on one of our webinars before in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, there's a little chat box with people putting all sorts of letters up at the moment. If you click where it says type your message, you'll be able to type whatever you want uh, for me and everyone else to see. Great. Nina B, let's see. All right, Nidia B, and I thought it was C. Right, let's see, let's see. We've got a, I've got a fair mix of everything here. Not too many people. Actually, no, I think everyone seems to be going for, for different options. Okay, I will tell you. Um, all these 
by the way, A, epiphobia um, exists, a glossophobia exists, verbophobia exists. I'm going to let's start actually with with C, verbophobia. Um, verbophobia exists and it means fear of words. Um, why somebody might be afraid of words, I'm not really sure, but it means fear of words, verbophobia. A also exists, epiphobia. Um, it means fear of teenagers. Ah, Vanessa, <laughs> you, you Googled, that's okay. So yeah, A means fear of teenagers, which we probably all had at some point, especially as teachers. And yeah, me too, Nina. Um, B, glossophobia, or at least I used to, Nina. Glossophobia, um, this is what is fear of speaking. Glossophobia, from uh, the Greek word glossos, meaning tongue, and obviously phobia, meaning phobia. So that is fear of speaking. All right. So um, where does this where does this get us as far as helping our students are concerned? I want to have a quick look at um, why it is that students won't speak. Why does this happen in the in the classroom? Um, I've got a few options here. Before I put them up, though, I'd like you to put one or two options in the chat box. One or two ideas. Why is it that it can be difficult to get students to speak? Right, okay, so embarrassment. Thanks, Lucia. What else? Just anything you can think of, go ahead, um, stick it in the chat box. Insecurity, yeah. Okay. Shyness, insecurity, yeah, lack of interest, lack of mood. Lack of vocabulary, yes, yeah. Fear of making mistakes, right, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, subject we pick, fear of being wrong. Okay, all right. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put basically. I think you guys have uh, put everything that I've put and and more, which is fantastic. In fact, somebody wrote exactly what I uh, had written here about fear of making mistakes. I I must agree with everything that you've all put. Totally. I mean, you know, we've all we've all had that either ourselves or or. or you know our students have so if you're making mistakes embarrassing themselves speaking english is difficult because the pronunciation is so different um uh any of you joining us uh, well from any country really but um as we'll be talking about in a minute english is a very it's not a very uh, let's say phonetic language um it has lots of silent letters issues with connected speech etc etc unlike um where i'm based here in areas in argentina the way you write a word is basically how it's pronounced. So that's very, very different. Um, number four, it's hard to concentrate on producing another language. I find this myself with Spanish all the time. I'm from England, but um, when I have to produce Spanish from long stretches, it's very hard. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that, Liliana. Um, yeah, we are there for them. That's true. But again, like like we're saying, they don't see that. They, they, they have the fear. Um, and they don't want to be embarrassed, I think, a lot of the time. And it's not cool to speak English in class. Um, I'll tell you a little story. A few years ago, I had what I thought was the perfect B1 level class. They, all these kids were like, I don't know, uh, 14, 15 years old. And um, everyone was speaking English all the time. I was really happy where I got them until this kid joined. Um, and I remember that he was this, this tall guy, this good looking chap. And suddenly everybody started speaking Spanish. And because he was quite, he was quite cool, this guy. And they didn't want to speak English in front of him because it wasn't cool. So they they all started speaking in English. And I thought, oh no, my, my perfect class, what's happened to it? Yeah, Rosario, I agree. Many times they, they don't like speaking in their own language either. Um, that's true. It's it's difficult. I think there's a real, you know, uh, what Stephen Krashen called effective filter issue in, in many ways in many ways. Okay, so um, speaking of that, Brown and Yule uh, call all of these things together, they call it communicate or call them communicative stress. We might ask ourselves the question, why is it so important for our students to uh, speak anyway? Why is it that important? Well, I've got this great um, the quote that I'm going to show you from Bygate, from Martin Bygate in a second. Uh, I agree with you, Cecilia, definitely about the, the pronunciation. Uh, I think teachers get scared of that. So Martin Bygate said this, 
It is the skill by which they are most frequently judged and through which they make or lose friends. It is the vehicle par excellence of social solidarity, of social ranking, of professional advancement and of business. If we think about that quote for a second, it's a very powerful thing to say. The vehicle par excellence of social solidarity, social ranking, of professional advancement and of business is all speaking. So it's extremely important, apart from for many, many reasons, it's extremely important. Um, and uh, Jäger, sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Jäger has just put uh, motivation. And yeah, that, that can definitely be a, a big issue. Um, but the question is, is it really that difficult uh, for them to speak in class? Well, just so that you can see this, if you haven't played this game before, if you haven't done this activity before with your students, I'm going to uh, suggest that you do this with your students. Um, in different countries, this game has different names. Uh, we hear, well, actually, I should say, first of all, um, in England, um, we uh, we call this game, we call this game, yes, exactly, Carla, we call it Chinese whispers. I've never really understood why. Like Fiamma has just put there, Telefono de compuesto or telefono roto, exactly. Broken telephone, if that's in, in case you don't speak Spanish. Or I suppose de compuesto would be like sick telephone, wouldn't it? Okay, so this is a great game to play with your students, it must be said. What you can do is the following. The, the, the trick with this game, if you haven't done it before, is, ah, that's what it is in Polish, okay. The, the trick with this game is give them a, a sentence with some very similar sounding consonants and vowels. Check this one out, for example. Koala bears are cute and panda bears are cuddly. Um, I have played this game either in class or at conferences a few times in the past. And my, my favorite is when all the students get to the end of the line and then you ask the final student what they heard and they usually hear, hear something very bizarre. In fact, at uh, a conference I did recently, um, this is what the final um, conference delegate heard. Killer bees eat puddles. Somehow we had gone from koala bears are cute and panda bears are cuddly, and she had heard killer bees eat puddles. Um, yeah, I totally understand what Maricel has just said. Funny game to practice what they listen and what they can understand by the listening. Yeah, so speaking clearly, very important. Otherwise, you get killer bees eat puddles from something that has uh, that seemingly has nothing to do with that at all. So this is what we're going to be talking about in this session. Um, you can see that I've put on the screen now a, a, an ideal, let's call it, speaking class lesson shape. Now. Uh, this has come from all sorts of various different sources. I've added a little bibliography below. And as you know, that this session is being recorded. And when uh, when it's over, as it will be very soon on the uh, Macmillan uh, Argentina Facebook, and I believe on the, the website as well. I'll tell you a bit about that at the end. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do, instead of just telling you, these five step lesson shape for a speaking class plan. What I want you to do is fill in the missing words, okay? Um, so number one, we've got orientation and what does that look like? But yeah, orientation and preparation, perfect, exactly right, good. So orientation and preparation, number two, required linguistic, I like that idea, Maricel. That's good. So what's the next one? Required linguistic number two. Yes, yeah, support. Exactly. Exactly. Required linguistic support. Good, 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 good. All right. Number three, setup of the... We'll type very quickly. Good. Number three is activity. Uh, number four, feedback on something and feedback on something else. What do you think those two are? Feedback on content and language. Perfect, Victoria. Thank you very much. Great. And then finally, number five, we've got task something. 
Task repetition, Carla, exactly, exactly right. Task repetition. We're gonna be looking at all of those over the rest of the session and how they work. So let's begin with orientation and preparation. Um, one of the most important things as we know when we're doing any kind of skills activity with our students is um, something called schemata activation. Um, just to um, just to make sure of something where with this terminology, um, what do you what does everyone understand by the word schemata in terms of schemata activation? Okay, so let's see. We've got structure, pattern, mental framework. Oh, I like that, Silvana. I might I might steal that. Uh, and uh, what Lucia said, previous knowledge as well. Right. Yeah. The idea of schemata theory, which I think was originally, I believe, Jean Piaget, I think schemata theory uh, was previous knowledge of the world. Um, I'm going to Antonella and Annabella together. Previous knowledge of the world. I put your two quotes together. So um, as, as regards that, uh, they're going to need a model for what it is they're going to do. Uh, this is a, a, a little dialogue in a second that I'm going to show you uh, from the from the book Optimize there. Um, this picture is telling you that the students are about to listen to what? What kind of a conversation are they about to listen to? Scolding, I like that, yeah. Maybe something they don't like, exactly, yeah. Um, in fact, what they're going to listen to, uh, the students are about to listen to a an argument between a son and a father. So obviously activating student schemata so that they are already thinking about what it is that they're, what, that they're going to be engaging with on the skills activity is very important. So the students are about to listen to a dialogue that's in fact an argument between a, yeah, his dad's telling him off, Claudia. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's what they're going to listen to. You can see that I put at the top of the slide, orientation, they need a model for their speaking. So whichever kind of speaking activity we're gonna do with our students, um, I don't think it's fair to just say to our students, okay, go and role play, whatever it is. They need a model for that. Uh, they need, they need to know what it is they're aiming for. So um, that's exactly the idea of this activity here, giving them a, if it's a, a writing activity, they would need a reading. If it's a speaking activity, therefore they would need a listening as the model for what it is they're gonna be producing as their productive activity at the end of the class. So um, they're gonna be listening to an argument. Um, now, why is, why have I chosen an argument for this? Um, well, as you know, when uh, we argue, people get stressed when we argue, don't we? And the good thing about stress is it's very useful for the English language because the English language, as we know, is called a stress-timed language. Um, I'm gonna quote the great Adrian Underhill here from his, uh, from his book, Sound Foundations. He says, English is sometimes called a stress-timed language. This refers to an underlying tendency for stressed syllables to occur at roughly equal intervals of time, regardless of the number of unstressed syllables in between. All right, so what does that mean in practice exactly? Well, he says that English, Dutch, and German are examples of languages said to be stress-timed. Spanish, Japanese, and French are said to be syllable-timed. So. Again, how does this actually cash out for us as teachers? Well, you see, I've got two phrases down there. In fact, I'm going to get a little thing so I can um, point it out to you. I can point out what I'm talking about. I'm going to call this. Um, uh, I'm going to call this number one, and I'm going to call this number two. Number one, put it down versus put it over there. Um, how many stresses do both of the phrases have? Actually, you can see it's in brackets next to it. They both have two stresses. 
The first one, however, has three syllables. And the second one has five syllables, but they both have two stresses in them. Only two stresses. Put it down, put it over there. Put it down, put it over there. Okay, so if we look at an example between two languages, exactly, Victoria, exactly. Um, just like French is as well, syllable timed language. If we have a look at this one in English, I've chosen a random utterance. I want a potato. I want a potato. We've got two stressed words there only. I want a potato. In French, and I'm sorry if any of you speak French, I'm sure there's plenty of you out there who speak French, and my French is terrible. I learned it years ago. So I apologize for the pronunciation that you're about to hear. But as a syllable, timed language, they tend to stress every syllable, rather like this. Je voudrais une pomme de terre. So on the one hand, you've got I want a potato. And in French, je voudrais une pomme de terre. So in that tendency, all the syllables tend to be stressed. And um, like Victoria has said about the um, Spanish being a syllable timed language as well. Right, right. <laughs> uh, merci, merci bien. <laughs> That's as good as it gets, I'm afraid. That's as good as it gets. I can say, I want a potato in French. Useful if I'm ever in a potato, potato based problem situation. Okay, so. Um, that's an issue between the two languages, getting stressed. So if we have a look back at, um, this is part of the conversation I've got here. Um, and especially, the reason I chose an argument, because especially in arguments, people stress words. We do this in English all the time, but especially in arguments, because we want to emphasize things, okay? So, for example, in the, I'm gonna ask you, by the way, in a minute, to tell me which, words you think dad is stressing, okay? I'm gonna read you how Nigel speaks and how Nigel stresses his words, okay? So, here we go. Dad, you never said I couldn't buy any more video games. You just said I had to be careful with the ones I chose. That is the way Nigel speaks. All right, exactly, good, good, never said, right. Okay, good, got the idea. What I'd like you to do is um, just uh, like, you know, 20 seconds or so, exactly, Daniela, we'll be coming to that. Content words are stressed, right. Um, which words do you think dad stresses? Have a look at what dad says, okay? In fact, I'm gonna read it to you. And you think this one is okay. I've read a review and it says it's very violent. Didn't you think I might not agree to this one? So let's see. Think, okay, yeah, I agree with that. Anything else? Okay, says, and in fact, I've all, I'm have i afraid, of, I'm just gonna see what Lucia is saying. Where is it, where is it, where is it? The chat box is disappearing so fast, I'm gonna. Lucia, I'm gonna try and find what you've just said and come back to it, because it looked very interesting. Um, so, yeah, all these words, review, says, very violent. Oh, good, Carolina, that's a good idea, putting them all together, and Nidia, too, fantastic. Great, great, great. Okay, so, um, oh, I like that, Vanessa, uh, Vanessa, very good. So, yeah, um, Dad says these words, and then Nigel, but Dad, I did choose carefully. It's the coolest game around. Everyone's got it, and they're all talking about it. You don't want to, f uh, excuse me, you don't want me to feel left out, do you? You don't want me to feel left out, do you? Again, he stresses the words that he's really trying to get across because it's an argument. You don't want me to feel left out, do you? A little bit of emotional blackmail from Nigel to his dad there, clearly. Um, so this is important to point that kind of thing out. And it follows on very nicely, actually, to um, the, the next uh, chapter in our speaking class lesson shape, which is required linguistic support. So how exactly does this work? I totally agree, Natalia, I totally agree. And watch, stay tuned for what you're gonna see in a minute. Um, 
Jennifer Jenkins, who is one of the foremost authorities on uh, sociolinguistics and phonology, says that word stress and stress timing are said to be important for a native speaker listener, either because they aid intelligibility or because they are thought to make an accent more appropriate. Um, in fact, Jennifer Jenkins um, uh, is, is convinced that, as I understand it at least, that, that for example, stress timing, sentence stress are one of the primary things uh, for understanding between people, especially with stress-timed languages like English. So um, how, how could we get this required linguistic support there for our students? Well, um, I'm going to show you a, a little trick with a poem now. Um, it's a particularly well-stressed poem, this one. I think you will agree. Um, we're not going to read the whole thing right now. It's called Maggie and Millie and Molly and May by E.E. E. Cummings. Not only is it a beautiful poem, um, but it's also got a great nursery rhyme feel to it and a very strong stress to it, which is very good stu for students to practice their stress timing with something like this. Um, I'm going to show you how it works now. I'm going to hide most of the poem from you. Oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just the first stanza of the poem. And it totally, it can agree, but it totally changes the message if the stress timing is in the wrong place. Totally agree. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you where the stress falls and how strong the stress is in this poem. And it is great, like I say, for students to work with a poem like this with you and predict where the stress is going to fall in uh, in the poem, and you can point something out to them, like I'm going to point out to you at the end of the poem. So, Maggie and May and Molly and May went down to the beach to play one day. And Maggie discovered a shell that sang so sweetly she couldn't remember her troubles. Millie befriended a stranded star whose rays five languid fingers were. And Molly was chased by a horrible thing which raced sideways while blowing bubbles. What I'd like you to do is I would like you to tell me which words you think are then stressed in the next stanza. We've done the first few together and I want you to point out to me um, which words are stressed in the next stanza. So uh, great. Exactly. Um, sorry, I'm just reading something I think Daniela wrote. Uh, my scrolling is not particularly great on the screen, but I totally agree with about word classes, and we'll talk about that in a second. Great. Um, I'll see what Alejandra has put here. Right. Look at this. Okay, so here we go. I'm trying to get to the bottom of the, the, the scrolling for the messages now. Okay. So we've got... May came home with a smooth round stone, as small as a world and as large as a loan. You could also argue that came is stressed as well. May came home with a smooth round stone, as small as a world and as large as a loan. And the final stanza, for whatever we lose, like a you or a me, it's always ourselves we find in the sea. So just to um, again, go from from the top with this. Maggie and Millie and Molly and May went down to the beach to play one day. And Maggie discovered a shell that sang so sweetly she couldn't remember her troubles. Millie befriended a stranded star whose rays five languid fingers were. And Molly was chased by a horrible thing which raced sideways while blowing bubbles. And May came home with a smooth round stone, as small as a world and as large as a loan. For whatever we lose, like a you or a me, 
it's always ourselves we find in the sea. Um, a beautiful poem, and very significantly, it um, uh, also shows the students, it will show the students quite clearly the following, that it is words like, um, I think it was Daniela who mentioned word classes, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, negatives, all tend to be stressed in a language like English with, with stress-timed tendencies. Um, so it's, it's really, really nice to point this kind of thing out to the students and, and let them to see. Uh, yes, sorry, I've just seen the, the bottom of the chat messages. Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, it's on the, um, you'll get my contact details at the end anyway. However, um, very significantly, it's on the, uh, it's on the, it's going to be on the recording. And I agree, Victoria, Maria Victoria Gonzalez, uh, yeah, they're all lexical words. Um, and Nina's just said, the stress is crucial in terms of understanding, even without proper grammar, the speaker will be understood. I'm glad you said that because what I got to say and I was about to was um, even if you just use content words, verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, it's still po uh, possible to understand a conversation with somebody. If I say, for well, for, for example, Maggie discovered Shell sang, you know what's being talked about because of the of the stress, um, a bit like a bit like Nina has said. There. OK, so. Um, moving on, yeah, you get the general idea, Natalia, you get the general idea, right. Okay, so going back to the dialogue with Nigel and Dad, you will also see the same thing here. Look, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and, and negatives are stressed. Again, um, it's quite a good idea to use an argument for a model because people stress things in arguments because they get upset. Yeah, okay, Alistair, we get the idea, good, okay. So um, right, that was a little look at uh, the, yeah, the required linguistic support there. We're going to have a quick look at uh, pronunciation support now as well. Um, this is an activity from the book Give Me Five. I really like it. Um, you'll see why I like it. Uh, the idea with this is that you can do this with any phoneme in English, but the idea is that you have several. I mean, here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the same phoneme. Words which all have the same phoneme in it, okay? Um, which phoneme is that that all those words have? Which sound is it that's the same in all of them? E, E, Peach, Queen. Exactly, Daniela. Yeah, exactly right. Good. Yeah, they've all got the long E sound. Different, again, um, between English and some other languages. Spanish has one um, E sound, uh, English has two. Other language may, may, may even have different ones. Good, okay, good. So look, um, I'm gonna play this game uh, with a, a little friend I have here uh, so that I can show you how it works. Um, and uh, I always lose at this game. Here is my friend. Uh, I don't know what you what you call this animal in in your languages. Uh, we we call this a a meerkat. This is my friend, the meerkat. Um, it's Minnie. Hello, Minnie. How are you? Minnie and I are gonna uh, play this game together and and show you how it works. Surikata. Okay. All right. Well, Minnie and I are gonna play this game together and show you how it works. Okay. Here we go. So, I have to say one word. Um, Minnie has to say the same word and then say another word. And then I, hello Minnie, hello. And then I have to, um, I have to remember what Minnie said and add another one onto that. Now I nearly always lose at this game, so please, please wish me luck, okay? All right, here we go. So, um, ladies first, Minnie, after you. B, okay, B, P. B, P, sheep, right, B, P, sheep, queen. BP sheep queen meat. BP sheep queen meat three. BP sheep queen meat three. Ah, Minnie, you got it wrong. I win. Hooray! I the first first time ever I've actually won this game, and it takes me to play a game with a with a wooden 
toy <laughs> for me to win. But you get the <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Daniela. Um, it is a really nice game. Um, students have to do it together. It's not something that they can just say, "Okay, I finished after one second, or after one minute, even," because they're so competitive, and they've got to remember what the last person said. And even if they get through all the words, they can continue, and so that they have sweet twice or whatever. Um, and there's it's it's a lot of fun for them. Like I say, it can be done with with any phoneme that you decide is difficult for the students to pronounce. Okay, so yeah, do 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 try that out. It is quite a lot of fun for them. All right, so let's move on. Setup of the activity number three. Now, I'm going to show you a game that um, I, I I started using a little while ago. Uh, yeah, absolutely rhymes as well. Why not? And uh, this is called Topic Tip Tic Tac Toe. And it looks like typical tic tac toe or noughts and crosses or da de di, as, as we say here in Buenos Aires. Um, this is how it works you've got a typical tic tac toe board. It's difficult to say that. Typical, typical tic tac toe board. And, but instead of having, um, you know, uh, noughts and crosses, you've got nine different topics. This is how it works. And somebody, somebody's gonna, somebody needs to time me for this. And uh, I'm gonna show you how it works now. I, good Natalia, <laughs> I hope you like it. I'm about to really embarrass myself with this, I think, even more th so than I did with Minnie just now. Um, this is how it works. You have all these nine topics and the students in, in, in groups, okay, I'm going to talk for a minute about, let's say, homework. And if they correctly talk about homework for one minute without hesitating, without stopping, they can put their green cross there. The next group maybe talk about early mornings, okay? So they put their cross there. And the original group talk about teenagers for a minute, so they can put their circle there. Um, and so the game goes on. You get the idea. But, um, the person from the group who talks about coffee, homework, whatever, must talk for one minute without stopping, without hesitating. If they stop or hesitate, then you stop things and the seconds that are left go to the next team. So it gets highly competitive, okay? Um, so what I would like to do, just to demonstrate this to you, I would like somebody to choose a topic for me to talk about for a minute. Which one of these would you like me to embarrass myself with? Uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Why did that have to be the first one? Thank you so much, guys. Right. Okay. Taylor Swift is the first one that I saw. All right. Taylor Swift it is. Um, right. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to time myself for this, okay? Uh, let me just get the the timer set up on my on my cell phone. Where is it? Okay. Uh, do I give them some preparation? Yeah, they can definitely have some preparation time if you want. But to be honest, I would get them to go straight into this. Right here we go. So uh, Taylor Swift. One minute starting from now. So Taylor Swift, I really don't know that much about her, I must say. She is a musician and uh, it was originally, I think, a country and Western singer, Taylor Swift. And I know that she, embarrassingly, I know that she uh, used to date Joe Jonas and they had a fight because I can't remember exactly what happened in their relationship, but they, I think they split up and she wrote a revenge song about it, didn't she? Yeah. And in the the song as with most of taylor swift's songs because i as i understand it uh, what normally happens is that uh, she splits up with somebody and then writes a song about it anyway that's exactly what happened here so they split up she wrote a song about it uh, very sad etc anyway uh what else she's also uh, she seems to be a bit of a crossover artist now because, I mean, she started off with the country and Western and now is sort of more poppy and, and she has a cat. I know that she has a very uh, fluffy cat as well. Right, that was over a minute, um, just over a minute. That was very embarrassing. Um, 
and it's on the recording me talking for a minute yeah thanks carolina somebody mentioned just now that i could do it in another language i could have done that in spanish um as this webinar is going out like uh, all over the world we've got people from all sorts of countries and i didn't want to embarrass myself further i thought it was better for me to do it in english let's just try and forget all of that happened anyway you get the idea of the activity in any case um so it, it does get very competitive as you can see all right i'm gonna just because of time i'm gonna spin forward a bit through the next one so that we can uh, get on with the with the following activities the next one um is the following um, it's called go with the flow now one of the issues that students often have is that it, even if they don't lack the vocabulary necessarily they they're not quite sure of the stages of the, of the turn taking, let's call it, in the conversations. And sometimes they need a bit more guidance than that. This activity is, um, um, it's, uh, it's, it's adapted for one of uh, Scott Thornbury's activities. And it's uh, a flow chart. It's a really nice little idea to give them uh, a flow chart for conversation. So they get the idea of where to go, okay? so. Um, what you can see that I've done here is I've blacked out certain parts of the flowchart. And in a minute, I'm going to get you to start thinking about what the missing bits might be. So, okay, so first of all, we've got dial number, answer telephone, then uh, the first person, greet and say who you are. Return greeting, ask why friend wasn't at class. And what I want you to do is look at the rest of these down here. We've got, say you're sorry, ask if you can help with anything. So what, what might have happened there? What might be the missing part there? Because one of the people in the conversation has to say that they're sorry. Yeah, maybe she was sick. Let's, let's have a quick look. That's why she wasn't in class, Natalia, let's say. Yeah, there you go. Say you are ill. Okay, correct. So say you're sorry, ask if there's anything you, uh, I beg your pardon, ask if you can help with anything. And the next stage is offer your book. So um, what do you think might have happened in the middle there? Now ask for homework. Yeah, it's Isabel. That sounds, so oh, what do we do in class today, Christina? Okay, let's see. Yeah, so you can't do the homework because you haven't got your textbook. Exactly, Maddie Sell. So I offer the book. Very good. All right. So what comes next after that, possibly in that case, after the, uh, the offering of the book? Ask him to come by, looks like something like that. Let's see. So next stage is accept, thank, and tell friend where you live. Say you'll come uh, this evening and say goodbye, say goodbye, end of conversation. Great. Okay, so look. Um, again, you don't have exactly, it's not scripted, but these are ideas. So the students can literally follow this. Hi, it's Alistair here. How, uh, how are you? I'm, f I'm not I'm not so good Taylor um, unfortunately I missed class today I was writing songs about my ex-boyfriend and my cat so they can say whatever they want but they've got they've got that they can go with the flow and they can they can build a conversation they don't have to think so much about the content of it because of that okay um here's another little idea uh, that you can do with students and um, I'm gonna need uh, a couple of people to help with this a couple of people to help i think i'm going to choose is if daniela and if daniela and nina are there are you both there daniela and nina yes 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 and okay right don't panic both of you here's how it works let me explain how it works first of all all right um it's called one word story a little speaking practice activity, okay, uh, for for uh, for setting up this activity. Um, what will happen is the following. Normally, obviously, we would do this speaking, but as this is a webinar, you're just going to have to write one word at a time, you two, Daniela and Nina, okay? And the idea is that you are to create a story using as many words as you possibly can, using only, sorry, in only one minute. But here's how it works. Because Daniela's gonna start the story. 
with the first word of the story. Nina is going to write the second word of the story. Daniela, the third word. Nina, the fourth. Bump, 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 like that. Now, like I say, as it's a webinar, we need to do this in writing. If you were my students, I'd be getting you to do this in pairs, recording yourselves to prove what you've done and to try and get as many words in and make a coherent story in one minute. If you were my students in a class, the group which had more words than any other in their one minute story would be the winning class. And yes, Daniela, just one word at a time, okay? But I'm gonna give you the lead-in uh, sentence for the story, all right? So, well, bear with me, Andrea, and see what you think. So, Daniela and Nina, are you ready? And in the meantime, nobody else is allowed to write in the chat box, okay? Only for the next minute, <laughs> only for the next minute, Daniela and Nina. I'm on my magic cell phone. I'm going to get the, the timer up. All right. So, Daniela, you're going first, okay? And I'm going to give you the lead in sentence for the story. Here it goes. Once upon a time, there was. Go. One word only. Okay, girl. Nina, next word only. Good. Daniela, one word only. Good. Go. Perfect, guys. Nina and Daniela, you've got the idea. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read it. One girl who was sad about... Nina. Come back to us. Weather. <laughs> she, she must have linked in. In. Happy. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Shaker. No, you're not. You, you, you're not allowed to type. Well, Daniela and Nina are typing. So weather in Paraguay. Good. Go on. Her. Friend. About 10 seconds left. Told. Her to calm <laughs> down. Good. Okay, stop, stop. That's just over a minute. Very good. Nina and Daniela, excellent. Good story. So let's let's just let's just yeah, great job. Let's just re read this story again. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's scroll up in the box. So once upon a time, there was a girl who was sad about the weather in Paraguay. A friend told her to calm down. Great. Very good, very good. So look, obviously, um, it's a speaking activity, so they'll be doing it face-to-face, -face, record each other doing it, one word each, boom, 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 boom. They must pay attention to cohesion and coherence. They must pay explicit attention to each other doing something like this, okay? Yes, Andrea, absolutely. And we're gonna be talking about delayed correction in a minute. Very good question. Okay, so speaking of which, here it comes. Feedback on content and feedback on language. This is one of the uh, last activities that we're gonna be looking at today. And this is how it works. Um, now, in order to show you a little idea about feedback on content and feedback on language, we are going to play a game called One Minute Murder. Now, um, a murder has been committed, not really, obviously, but a murder has been committed, and you guys, my students, have to work out who done it, basically. Okay? Oh my God, I know, Norma, I know, daunting. Right. Here are the suspects. Um, Photo from the Buenos Aires Police Department. These are our suspects, Tinky Winky, Dipsy, Lala, and Poe. Uh, one of these was the murderer, okay? Now, I'm gonna sh give you some, uh, a bit of back story to this, all right? Here's the situation. Wait a minute, Andrea, we, <laughs> we don't know that it was Poe, definitely Lala. Thank God they're a murderer. <laughs> yeah, it was, only, it was only one of them. <laughs> Look, they all look creepy, guys. Come on. Uh, they all look pretty creepy. Right. Look at what it says at the top of the page. No, it's funny. Don't be, don't be sorry. The murder happened after they all had dinner. And the murderer, here is some evidence, 
left dirty footprints in the kitchen, left a knife in the kitchen, you can see this on the top uh, left of the slide, and left hair on the kitchen floor, all right? Now, you interview Tinky Winky, Dipsy, Lala, and Poe, okay? And they say different things about the situation to you. This is what they say. Now, they all say things about each other. And by listening, or by reading in your case, what they said, you can work out who the murderer was. Now, you have a look at this, and in the meantime, I'm going to read it to you, okay, which will give you time to assimilate what you're being told. And you should be able to work out who the murderer was. So, again, remember, we've got dirty footprints in the kitchen. Um, whoever it was left a knife in the kitchen and hair on the kitchen floor. So Tinky Winky says, Dipsy wears slippers at home. Lala did the washing up after dinner. Poe has very long hair. Dipsy says, Tinky Winky loves cooking. Lala never cleans her shoes. Poe ate in his room last night. How they know which one's male or female, I'm not really sure. But anyway, Lala says, Tinky Winky has just got new shoes. Dipsy went to bed long after dinner. Poe only eats with a fork. And finally, Poe tells you, the police officers, Tinky Winky has never had a haircut. Dipsy eats with his hands, ew. And Lala was brushing her hair at dinner. Right, there's the evidence before you. Who do you believe, my police officers, who do you believe that the murderer was? Right, Norma and Aaliyah say Lala, Andrea says Poe. Hmm, everybody's typing. Oh, look at this, la 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 la. Poe, Lala, how could you do that? You're a very clever person, <laughs> yeah. Possibly not that clever, Gabrielle, um, as we'll see. Right, most of you, most of you seem to think, yeah, good, Mohammed, good, exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> it was, actually, it was Lala. Lala was the murderer. Why? Because um, the fact is that she never cleans her shoes, we know. Um, she was in the kitchen after dinner because she did the washing up. And she was brushing her hair. So um, she left the footprints, she left the hair, and she left a knife in the kitchen. All the others have alibis. All the others have reasons, if you look, why it couldn't possibly have been them. Okay? So now, again, if you're my students, there would be specific language I would be getting you use in order to complete this activity. And this goes back to what I can't remember. Who said it was now? It could have been Andrea, I think, about the uh, delayed correction. What does the teacher do while the students are talking? Well, my idea is the following, that the teacher writes on the board some examples of good language and improvable language that the students are using, okay? Because what we're going to do now, what we're going to do now is uh, play a game, well, a game activity, um, called uh, Grammar Auction. I want you to have a quick look at those sentences. As I say, you will notice that some of them are correct sentences grammatically and some of them are incorrect sentences grammatically. And again, if you're my students, I'd be dividing you all into maybe, let's say, uh, three teams, okay? Let's imagine three teams are called the best, the winners, and we rock. And you all have $100, okay? Not pesos, but you all have $100. Your job is to bid for correct sentences. The idea is that you guys in your teams will be buying correct sentences. But I know there's well over 130 of us in the room at the moment, so I can't really divide you into teams. However, what I can do, let's say, for example, um, Lucia thinks that she believes the first sentence is correct. So she offers me $5 for the first sentence. But then Daniela also thinks that the first sentence is correct. So she says, no, I want to bid $10 for that sentence. And then imagine Ana Torres also thinks it's correct. She bids $15 for the sentence. The, you all have only $100 each to spend, okay? So the sentences go to the highest bidder. And again, the idea is that the team that buys the most correct sentences wins. 
There's a lot of us here, but we're going to play this game a little bit anyway, all right? Because I just want you to get the feel of how the game would work. So let's start. Now, Mohammed, you don't want to spend all your money at once. Let's let's start. Let's start slow. OK. All right. But I like I like your thinking. You're thinking big. That's good. OK. So wait, hold on. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah, I would be as well if I were you. All right. Listen, let's let's start. Let's start with number one. OK. Who wants to give me five? Wait. No, I'm going to be the, the auction master. OK. Who would like to give me five dollars for sentence number one? Anybody want five dollars for sentence number one? Yes, Nina. Nina Nina wants to buy sentence number one for $5. Let me write that down. Nina's gone for sentence number one for Ludopaths. No, you're not, Ludopaths. I, I disagree. Right. No one, not a single penny. Fair enough. Okay. Going once, going twice, going three times. Sold to Nina gets sentence number one. Right. Who wants to bid $5? Sentence number two. Lila has the face of a crazy. Sentence number two. Sentence number two. Anybody interested in this? It's a beautiful sentence. What's wrong with sentence number two? It's great. No, not worth the money, Mohammed. Okay, not worth my money. Okay, no, going once, going twice, three times, gone. Right, nobody wants sentence number two. Sentence number three, he must have been the killer. Five dollars, sentence number three. Carla, and then, okay, ten dollars. Anyone give me ten dollars for sentence number three? Right, good. Hey, two hundred, you can't have two hundred dollars. Wait, wait, wait. Ten dollars, we're on ten. Actually, hang on, let me, let me hide my picture because I can't I can't see all the messages in the chat box right um, Monica ten dollars somebody give me fifteen dollars Ivana fifteen twenty dollars for sentence number three twenty dollars sentence number three twenty dollars sentence number three who's that Isabel great Isabel twenty dollars twenty five Maria um, Maria, Victor Maria Victoria thirty are you bidding against yourself Maria Victoria okay I've got thirty dollars thirty five for Daniela Anyone give me 40? Patricia 40 45 somebody give me forty five dollars anyone give me forty five all right um 50 Mohammed. okay all right Anyone give me maybe you've got to buy the the correct amount of correct sentences okay 55 dollars 55 anybody give me 55 going once to Mohammed. 50 okay ivana ivana 55 and they give me 60 65 dollars we're interested in 60 uh 65 anybody 65 noelia 65 70 dollars somebody give me 70 dollars you can't have 67 daniela multiples of five 70 dollars noelia you all just want sentence number three, don't you? All right. Rosario gives me 75. Anybody? Uh, Alejandra, 85. Anybody top 85? Somebody give me 90 for sentence number three. Isabel, 90. <laughs> all right. Maria's just bid me 100. Maria Victoria, you've bid me 100. Maria, you've got... Maria Victoria, you've got sentence number three for $100. Congratulations. You don't have 105, Andrea, no. All right, listen, 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 listen. Um, you get the idea. We won't go through the rest of them, but again, the idea is that you buy, it's the team with the, the highest amount of correct sentences that wins, all right? Um, so it's best not to spend all your money on one correct sentence, even if you're 100 percent sure, because somebody else, another team might buy two correct sentences. OK, by the way, um, technically, I suppose the winner is Maria Victoria, because she was the only one that bought a correct sentence. Uh, the only one that bought another sentence was Nina for five dollars, which is a very cheap sentence, but it was wrong. By the way, just to point something out to you. Um, yes. Uh, so she can't have did it. Obviously, should be she can't have done it. Uh, Lala has the face of a crazy. He must have been the killer. Um, never would I have thought of that. Maybe you have the reason the murder might have been lying to us. So well done, Maria Victoria. Well done. All right. So you get the idea. OK, quickly moving on, just because we're running out of time. The last one is task repetition. Um, your students might be thinking, why on earth? Would you be making us repeat a task? But it's a very good idea. Um, um, what is suggested is that you think about but one of five different things to do to repeat the task using something different, OK? Um, interaction, change the interaction, change the content, change the roles, change the goal, change the time. Um, yeah, sorry, Alejandro, you did. Um, so what I've done here, as you can see, that I have some examples of doing on uh, doing things on the on the left uh, for what are you talking about Alistair I'll show you what I'm talking about so for example um, interaction might be 
Um, same task, but oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. That's the wrong one. Ah, where's my where's my eraser here? There it is. Erase everything. Oops. Yes, I'm sure I want to clear the page. Right. Um, interaction. Same to same task, but learners talk to a different partner. Right. Good. Can you all do what Andrea is doing? I want you to um, match them all up now. So number three is not actually C. So that's a different one. Two is A. Let's see. Same task, but change the topic. Okay. What about the others? Three is E. Let's see. Same task, but characters are switched. Right. Two more. So we've got four is B. Yes. Change the outcome in some way. And then, yeah, um, time. Uh, yeah, put pressure on by learners by saying they have, for example, only one minute to do it. So again, there's there's five different ways of doing the same task, uh, like with the argument that we saw at the beginning, the same thing after you've done the delayed correction, but repeating the task in a different way. So there's another there's another element of challenge to it for them. No, it's all right, Natalia. We're nearly finished. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, so there's there's a new challenge for them, but they're doing the same thing, but with better language because you've already had the delayed correction section with them. All right, so, um, and those were the answers. Um, so for just to, just to completely finish now, just to finish off, just before you go, and I go as well. Um, another example, an example of this would be for the a goal changing the outcome all right um what i'd like you to do i'm going to read the dialogue to you and i want you to imagine what dad says to nigel at the end okay i'm going to read it to you and i want you to have a think but dad you never said i couldn't buy any more video games you just said i had to be careful which ones i chose and you think this one is okay i have read a review and it says it's very violent didn't you think i might not agree to this one but dad, I did choose carefully. It's the coolest game around and everyone's got it. They're all talking about it. You don't want me to feel left out, do you? So what would dad, who's now mini the, the, the meerkat say? <laughs> don't be another brick in the wall. I like it. I like it. Nice Pink Floyd reference there. Let's wait for a couple of others. What do I care about everyone who shouldn't care what other people say? I like it, good, good use of the modal as well, I like that. You'll do what I say, exactly. Stop fooling around, you're different, behave differently. It's actually some pretty good advice you guys are coming up with, I have to say. Okay, so again, you get the idea. Um, they, they are repeating the task, task repetition, but they've had the delayed correction, like we played with the grammar auction, and now they're doing the same thing again, but with a different goal, a different challenge, okay? Good, I like that, Andrea. I like, yeah, I think my mom used to say that to me when I was a kid. If other people jump from a bridge, would you do it too? Yes, if everyone jumps from a bridge, would you do it too? Okay, guys, okay. Um, so we better wrap up. So we've had a look at orientation and preparation, retired, uh, required linguistic support, setup of the activity, feedback on content, feedback on language, and task repetition, finally, okay? So um, thank you very, very much for joining us this evening. That was uh, really enjoyable. I, I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, I had a great time. I hope you did as well. Um, just to reiterate, uh, what I was saying at the beginning of the webinar that you will all get your uh, you, you will all get certificates for this. Okay, um, not only that, but the as you know the webinar has been recorded, so um, and we will let you know as uh, as soon as the recordings uh, as soon as the recording is ready, and and. It's been a lot of fun, very enjoyable, and I've enjoyed learning with you. And we've had some great ideas, and um, I'm glad you. I'm glad, so glad everybody came. So, take care. Please stay tuned for the next Macmillan webinar. You'll be seeing that advertised um, not only on Facebook and Instagram and the Macmillan social media, uh, but the um, the website as well. So I hope to see you at the next one. It's been very, very enjoyable. Thank you. Take care and enjoy your evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are.
Bye-bye. Bye, guys. 